Hey guys, this is GB Wang. So this video is a continuation of my 2v2 masterclass series and uh, and, and the idea here is how to use the mothership effectively as well as um, defending your base effectively. So today I have my partner, Play Duke, and um, so he's spawning as Terran, I'm spawning as Protoss, so we're going to be um, TP versus TZ. And this was a game taken in the Masters Leagues. Um, so the the story behind my my games with him was that he wanted to get a a portrait of some sort and so we wanted to make these games really quick the idea was just to use cheese tactics and blitzkrieg all of our opponents but in this case what i was originally trying to do was set up a uh, a two gate but because of because of this scv that threw down the um the supply depot he was able to see me and so you can't commit to that two gate anymore and the only appropriate response at this point would be a mothership rush so a couple of things I do want to point out. If you are going to two gate, this is actually a great map for it because if you pull a probe right at the very beginning of the game, you can actually sneak it into the little crannies um, uh, of their base and throw down the two gate. The only thing is you have to watch out for Zerg. So most of the time when I do this, I look for the creep, and if there's creep, I just um, hide on the other side. So this pretty much failed. So plan B is our mothership rush, and in order to execute the mothership rush, um, the main thing that you want to worry about is getting that mothership out as soon as possible. So um, in most circumstances, uh, you know, in this case, I, I had to kind of salvage it and do a mothership rush. But you want to throw down your pylon at nine. And then you want to get gas first, and then you throw down your gateway. I usually do this when I'm at 10 supply, just so I can tech up a little bit faster. And the hit to your econ isn't very big because you're not going to use your chronos on your um, on your on your cyber core. You're, you're going to use it on probes, so you can catch up very quickly. And so now um, Playdo he put down his racks first, and then he went for gas as well. He's going to try to go for a marine type opening. And so in the meantime, since I do have this probe floating around, I'm just scouting for intel. Um, one of the things that you can see here is the pool actually came up pretty slow. It looks like it's um, probably around a 14 pool or uh, something along those lines. And so uh, one of the things that's nice is um, since we were able to scout it, we we can um, we don't have to worry about the pressure of like walling off very quickly. And so it's not going to um, – so that way his build order is a little bit – optimized and he's going for refinery or he's going for reactor first which is nice because that way um, when you are actually ready to push you're gonna have more units than if you place down the tech lab so looking at um, the Terran player what he did is he's gonna he opened up with um, with racks and then uh, Rax and Tech Lab, and so now he's just cranking out a Marine. We don't have to worry about uh, any kind of Reaper push as well. And now, um, so now the Zerg player, he's thrown down a Roach Warren, which means that he's going to be opening up with a 7 Roach Rush. And this is actually, it's a very powerful build um, in 2's games as well, because you can catch people off guard, especially Protoss, before their, um, their Warp Gate tech comes up. So... Back to the mothership build. So once um, so I get a little bit supply blocked over here. But once you, once you get that gateway and that cyber core, then you want to, you know, you want to get that, uh, you want to get the gas. You want to get, you want to get your double gas right when the cyber core comes up too, and then you want to go for Stargate. So with the mothership build, after you go for Stargate and you go for the fleet beacon and you crank out that mothership, you want to save a few chronos so that you can get that mothership out as soon as possible, and then I would throw down another two or three gates. So depending on how many probes you have, like if you're pushing around 30 probes, you can actually support four gate Stargate. Um, at least transiently, and you can alternate that with um, like just regular four gate. So that's pretty much the idea here. Now they're ready to push. So he's got his uh, three, six. Um, he's got his yeah. He's got his seven. He's got his seven roaches out along with marine marauder pressure. And this is um, it's actually a very scary situation to be in, especially now because it's like two v one. I don't really have any units. I'm still trying to crank out my tech. So Play Duke, um, he's he's able to respond to my my scout. I had noticed the seven roaches coming um, before I lost my probe, and so now he's just throwing down um, he's throwing down bunkers like crazy, and. Uh, and so now it gets kind of scary. Like he needs to really be pulling his SEVs to to defend this quickly, especially because all he has are Marines, and the Roaches are pretty much um you know hard countering that. So 
in the meantime, I'm trying to I'm trying to do as much as I can at this point. I'm just going to crank out a Void Ray as well. And since Zerg is all ground and Terran, like there isn't really a lot of Marines left over. You know, the single Void Ray should be able to block um, block what's going on here. And Playdo, he's barely he just barely got that barracks up in time or his uh, his bunker up in time. And so we're going to be. It looks like we're going to be okay. Like all of the all of the Marines are pretty much going to be rallied rallied over there. And so now, you know, these guys, they kind of overcommitted a little bit to this push, especially because there's, um, you know, already there's bunkers in place. And now with the Void Ray out, you know, they, they, have, to, they have to back up a little bit. The thing that sucks is because you don't really want to give away the, the Void Ray because otherwise, you know, they're going to um, get anti-air. Like especially the, the Zerg player, I think, is going to end up throwing down an Evo Chamber in a little bit. Um, so now all of the tech is up on my side, the fleet beacon. The fleet beacon is done and the mothership is coming out. And so once I get my infrastructure set up, I'm going to start chronoing out the uh, the mothership. And in the meantime, you know, Zerg player is going to be really aggressive. He's going to try to break down these destructible rocks. And it looks like like the Terran, he's getting reinforcements as well. So I have to pull back the, um, the Void Ray and I have to use that for defense. But... We're doing okay right now. There's um, you know, two two barracks, two barracks already in play. A third barracks coming up and a drop ship. So at least that way, you know, he can keep his uh, his marines alive for a little while longer. And uh, now it's getting kind of scary though. The rocks are kind of going down, and then um, the bunker is not yet ready, and so the mothership is still not ready to go. Um, now it's about eighty percent, eighty percent done. But now, now here comes Terran um, on my side, and he's breaking down the rocks as well. And so we're in a bit of trouble. You can't keep making these uh, these bunkers, and we now it's like get, getting very critical. My gates are my four gates are finally starting to come up, and so I'm finally going to be able to get some real units to the army. But we have to deal with. With Terran as well, and so now the rocks have just come down, and uh, here they come to engage with the full force of their army, and the mothership comes out just in the nick of time. And so, because they've committed to this early push, they're not going to be able to have effective anti-air. And once the cloak comes, we're not going to end up losing, uh, you know, a single unit unless they end up scanning. And so, timing is pretty much perfect. More stalkers are going to come out, and marines and medevac as well. So let's see how the uh, the other side starts to react to it. Um, so now you can see the Evo Chamber is done, and then he put up um, he put up two spore crawlers. But the thing is, it's okay because with without any like mobile anti air, the mothership is still going to be very powerful as well. You know, there's no overseers in play. Terran player is not going to um, tech to Raven as evidenced by the reactor, and he's going to crank out some Vikings most likely to deal with the mothership. But unfortunately, because you have this uh, like such superior tech that comes out so early in the game. There's no way that he's going to be massing up enough Vikings, and if he does, it's going to come at the cost of his ground army, which is really what um, what they should be worrying about, especially with these Stim Marines and the, the dropships, which are going to prolong their life, as well as some reinforcing um, reinforcing stalkers. So now I've thrown down a, a pylon over here, and I'm going to be reinforcing with more units as well. And um, now the mothership is going to go, and we'll see how this uh, how this works out. So you can see Zerg player; he's trying to get the spore crawlers in position. But the thing is, without the um, you know, like the, the ground army can just focus down any any kind of detector that they have. And here comes the Vikings, but with the Stim Marines, the um, you know, the Vikings go down very easily. And with this this little marine. Marauder Ball is not going to stand a chance. Now, Zerg player, he's actually going for, for Banglings right now, and I do have enough energy for a Vortex, but um, you don't really want to, like, do a Vortex in this case, because um, sometimes, like, if your units get caught in the Vortex with the Banglings, like, when they come out, the Banglings can, can destroy a lot of your units quickly, and so you just use the Cloak, and th that's pretty much it. They, they obviously, you know, they're, they're severely out because of that Mothership, and they end up leaving the game. And so... A couple of things that I do want to point out. Why why did the mothership work well um, on this map? One of the things when you do a mothership rush, especially in Masters League, you want to do it on a map where you guys are spawning together because that way it's easy to defend. I also had the advantage of a good Terran player on my side as well because with Terran, you know, they can turtle up like none other, so you, they can actually stall for time really well until the mothership comes up and. Um, 
And so well, with that with that good defense, we were able to hold off until the unit came up, and you know that kind of um, ended up winning the game. So that's pretty much it. This I have some other videos too where I use a Mothership Rush and Masters League. Um, if I can find them, I'll upload them as well. So thanks for listening, guys, and uh, take care.